I'm Stella and welcome to my channel and as part of Bad Sydney, Sydney Crime Writers Festival, I'm here in the rather magnificent Abbey's bookstore. I happen to be in Crime Lane and there is a crime writer. Stella, <gasps> what a coincidence. Thanks in meeting Michael Burge, <laughs> author of Tank Water here. Lovely to meet you Step in a in. lovely, lovely cool spot today on Sydney. Yeah, it is a bit warm. Now, um, we had a bit of bad news. We went looking for your book and it's we not did. here. No. That's sold out because you've got some exciting news. Well, we've gone for another print run. Midnight Sun Publishing ran out of copies of Tank Water. They are some available Do you have a big family? <laughs> I do, and lots of friends, yes. Lots of very, very close friends, yes. So I... Look, I could tell everyone how fantastic Tank Water is, but I'm going to let you do that. Tell us, give us a quick pitch uh, about your novel. Well, it's a coming-of-age crime thriller. Uh, it uh, takes place in a country town. It's Outback Noir, which is basically any dark deeds in the country <laughs> that need investigating, and there are plenty. In this one, there are some pretty serious ones. Gay hate crimes is one of the big themes of this book. And uh, I couldn't believe when I almost put the book together that no one had fictionalised these stories in Australia. Very important subject matter, but also kind of good for um, distracting us when we uh, love our crime writing and uh, get into the nitty gritty of it all. It's pretty grisly, but um, yeah, it's tank water. A little bit about you can't believe somebody hasn't fictionalised these. Uh, so. Is this, you found out this through your research? Yes, I found out, yes, I actually researched gay hate crimes in country towns for quite some time, a couple of years. Oh. And um, I think there's been a play written about them and there's certainly been documentaries about them. But cases in the country, very, very little writing about them, very, very little investigation about them, very little actual reporting about them. So yes, I couldn't believe that no one's fictionalised these stories. Um, it, it is a very important subject matter to take seriously, of course, but um, yeah, I think fiction's a great way to explore the issue uh, because some of the cases are now before the courts, we can't talk about them, will influence the outcome, apparently. So with fiction, we can talk about it through tank water. So tell us about, speaking of reporters, tell us about your protagonist, James. Well, James is a journalist. He's uh, been working in the suburbs for a few years, like I did. Uh, when you're a, a, a journalist in the suburbs, you invariably end up at the courthouse and the police station trying to get information out of police for your police rounds every week and uh, on occasion if there's been a crime locally, you have to get information out of the registrars. And in the suburbs, they're pretty, <clears throat> pretty hard to get information out of. In country towns, I've found, not so difficult. Um, in the cities, almost impossible. But uh, still, you've got to get the story in. So James actually finds a few old stories in the town when he returns for his cousin's funeral. Um, and they put him into a pretty dark place uh, that he's got to find the truth out about. Now, you said it's set, there's two timelines. It's 1985 and 2005. So what made you decide to do well, well, one town, one timeline is because he's looking back. So what made you decide on those two particular timelines? Well, hate crimes are what we call historical crimes in Australia. Uh, there is still, unfortunately, they still happen a bit, um, but some of the high profile cases took place around 30 years ago. So I have projected back into the past. Please tell me 2005 was not 30 years ago. No, but 1985 was more than 30 years ago. <laughs> so, How did that happen? Yeah, I know, I know. And look, I've had people say to me, Drew, did, did gay hate crimes happen in 2005? Well, yes, they did. I had that question. That's why I researched it. Um, the recent inquiry about it in New South Wales, the, the um, terms of reference were as recently as 2010. Uh, but during the marriage equality plebiscite, there was also a spike in cases of gay hate crime. So it's 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 an issue. It's unfortunately a bit of a perennial issue. Ha issue. Hopefully, we're getting over it exponentially. But um, Tank Water certainly looks back into the the bad old days. And yes, 2005 for Australian gay culture is the bad old days. Oh, right. yeah. Uh, but it's, it must still be happening now because, like as you said, m marriage equality only just happened a few years ago. That's right, that's yeah. right. And uh, look, that issue is touched on in the book, but in 2005, I can't deliver anything more than little seeds of hope mm. for the characters, which was an interesting tension, I think, in itself. 
And uh, you're a country boy, are you? I am, yes. Oh, yes. And, was it, and, and do you still live in regional Australia? I do. I'm what's known as a regional returner. We, um, we are the generations who return back home and, um, you know, uh, after living and working away uh, from, from our birthplaces. And I, you know, lived in Sydney for years, studied here, went overseas, worked, came back to live in the cities in Sydney and Brisbane, but then had the sort of draw back to the country. And it's... I think we're one of the biggest demographics in the country. I know in our region, Glen Innes, we are the biggest demographic. Well, what, what do you, oh, returning. Yeah, re oh. returning, retur regional returners, people born in the, in the country, perhaps not in exactly the same place you've returned to, but we are, yes, one of the biggest waves of the population coming into the country, people who were born there. What are readers saying about your book, like in particular country people? Uh, have you had much feedback? Not so much from country people. There's a couple of people have said to me, what are you worried about publishing this book? Is anything really preying on your mind, like the content of it? And there's a couple of things, and it is the country audience that I am wondering how they're going to take it. Um, I think I've done a, a pretty authentic portrayal of country stoicism, country uh, familial relationships. Um, but there's a couple of things. So James is a journalist and he thinks and feels in headlines. So. I'll give, oh, I love give you a that. clue. Some of the headlines, yeah. I'm like, oh. but as a former sub editor, you do worry about your headlines sometimes for years. Sometimes oh, you really? Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. So there's uh, yeah, a couple of a couple of headlines that some country folk might take issue with. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> now it's not a spoiler to say that James is gay. Yes. Yes. So w what are you? Is James going to come back? I've got two questions. Is James coming back in another novel? And is is the genre called, is there, is there much gay crime books out there? there I think there's Maybe. an increase in gay crime, or not gay crime, but gay characters in crime. So Anne Cleves has just written a new, or is in the process of releasing a new series where the character in the UK is a married gay man. Um, but in Australia, not so much, um, and in rural um, gay communities, almost nothing. We had some groundbreaking young adult fiction though recently, so Gary Lonesborough's Boy from the Mish and um, Holden Shepard's The Invisible Boys yes. have been published in the last couple of years, so when I saw those titles coming out I thought, oh, there's a little bit of a wave forming here, so I felt more confident that Take Water would find its place in that growing genre. And I think there's all kinds of frontiers now being broken for the queer community like that and it's it's really no mistake it's coming on the on the back of our broadest equality yet there's still more work to do but fiction kind of sometimes forecasts that a bit which is nice That's so fantastic. it'd be lovely to see a whole lot more it'd be lovely to see a rural gay genre there and yes james could come well, back rural romance i'm thinking oh yes even though we're supposed to be talking about crime but come on well sometimes crime is born of romance isn't oh. it? <laughs> 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 right. Now, I really wanted to talk to you about uh, Agatha Christie yes. very quickly because you love she, Agatha Christie, oh, like yes. her crime. You think even her bad books are good. I do. Look, um, she must have been contracted to write one a year and she wrote so many, I think over 70 titles and it was a Christie for Christmas all through the 50s and 60s and 70s. So when, I mean, it's not up to me to judge for other people who, what works are bad or good but some of her later works the plots were a little bit weaker but the atmosphere was always always so palpable a late book uh, like um, by the pricking of my thumbs it's one of my favorites it's one of the probably cozy mystery defining books written in 1968 and it's one of the Tommy and Tuppence series it's not a Hercule Poirot or a Miss Marple it's a bit more unusual than that and the atmosphere in that book in just these small little country towns in England um, and Tuppence by that stage, Tuppence was like a de facto Agatha Christie. She aged as Agatha Christie herself aged. And so we have an older woman uh, who's not Miss Marple sleuthing around a country town. She ends up getting coshed on the back of her head. And to find out what happens, you have to read the story. Yes. Now you didn't, is James coming back? He could. Look, I, um, I actually plotted two sequels to this. And uh, it's preyed on my mind a bit about how to do that because there's the 20 year time difference in the first one, would I want to project forward ah. another, another 20 years? Because if I did, Children. we're going to be in our era, which is this broadening of equality, ah. the broadening of 
of, of so many issues, particularly for gay people, but also for queer, all queer people, but also in the countryside with this regional returning phenomenon, it's broadening Australian country culture way, way out. So who knows, it could be um, something that's coming slightly in the future. So 2000, uh, sorry, um, 2025, let's, let's think about that, it's coming. Now, questions. You get to pick one from the questions of doom. I have to pick a question. I have to come up with a better, better title. The questions of doom. doom. Oh, how wonderful. I love this bit. Ta -da. So you want me to read it? Yeah, go on. What's a stereotype about being a writer that you never correct people on? Yeah, so do people go, especially as a debut writer, you know, oh, you must be really rich by now. Well, is there a stereotype? <laughs> I can't comment on that particular one. But I think, I think one of the biggest stereotypes we face is that people think that everything in our books is about us or stems but from us. But do you let them believe that? Do I? Well, That I you think... don't correct people on. That they, oh, mm. you, must, you must be very posh now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Well, maybe maybe they think that writing is really lovely, genteel thing that you sit at. We sit at our desks and we have these genteel thoughts and we watch the world go by. My husband actually says, "I know when you're writing because you don't listen to me. You're in some zone, and you you <laughs> literally are just you could just be floating around." And it's probably quite true because I, I I'm not physically writing or tapping at my screen, but I am processing the plot and possibilities almost every waking hour it's probably really it probably doesn't register on anyone's radar that that's actually a creative process but it is and it, uh, I think it's a real part of the writing process and that it probably impacts every writer but probably every writer's partner or close family uh, uh, have, a, have a different take on what's going on. Okay.